a gentleman once met me and said apostle what would be the one secret that you think is responsible for what God is doing in your life and I told him I said all the things you are going to say as suggestions are wrong I study to the glory of God I pray I fast I learn but none of those things are the real reason behind the hand of God I can tell you the real reason I never forget where he's brought me from and I remember you see when you forget where God took you from there is something there is a healthy anchor there is an anchor that your memory of yesterday can bring to you you remember how he picked you oh dear David do not let the palace make you forget that you were once in the wilderness some of you you have forgotten where God took you from it is good to remember that he took you and brought you to Lagos and you did not even have a place to stay now that you are an estate owner never forget it is easy to submit when you remember personal sang it beautifully and said I remember your goodness I remember many people forget it says let it not be that when you are built houses please hear me you're a man of God here you are a preacher especially always go back to remember once upon a time you had no voice once upon a time you had no comeliness once upon a time there was no grace speaking upon your life the nations did not even know you were there yet in that depraved situation there was still an ancient king sitting on the throne the one who lifts men now he has granted you access to taste of his hand if you forget him in the midst of mundane opportunities I would rather ministry live a thousand times so that the one who met me when nobody knew me I rather remain he is called the first and the last anybody who was not there does not deserve to be first and will not be last will only be found somewhere in between that equation for some of you God is calling you now you are ashamed of Jesus you are so wealthy he looks like an interruption to your growth you are so blessed you are a great preacher expanded and enlarged ladies and gentlemen return to that place i remember i'm now a mother of four but once upon a time i was in my fear will a man ever come to marry me and his faithfulness he came to pick me from my lowly estate how about those who you never imagined from the family you came from that you may be able to go to school and yet god picked you and you came probably to serve in lagos today you are well established never forget his goodness the psalmist said bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his name he says bless the lord oh my soul and forget not his benefits you are the thirst you are the stream you are the hunger living deep inside of me you are the food that satisfies you are provision for the journey of my life you are everything you are everything Lord, we are not ashamed to let the nations know that you are everything. Doesn't matter the names that they call us. You are everything. Listen. You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside hallelujah someone reached me not too long from a nation that has mandated that we reach you that they want you to come and hold a national day of prayer for that nation and when I was done with the conversation I put my head down and I said Lord you said this 
that if I will let men see you, there is nothing you cannot do. And then I told him, I said, no problem. Let me go back to the one who lifted me and ask him if that is consistent with his will. Because the foolishness of rising is to assume that just because it's good, it is the will of God. Do you still have the patience to return back? That all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. That your life, it is his yes that becomes the matching order. And his no becomes your eternal restraint. Even in the midst of plenty, if he says no, his desire becomes your command. This is what it means to be surrendered. To, to be surrendered is beyond just crying. You can cry and still be a rebel. The ability to hear his yes and to hear his no. Hallelujah. I want to use the next few minutes to pray for you. There is a grace that I have discerned that is coming upon the body of Christ. I have discerned this grace in my place of prayer. There is a kind of anointing that not many people carry in a generation. But that grace has been searching for men. The Bible says among many prophets, there was none like this one, John the Baptist. He came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. So why would the Bible says among all the prophets, there was none like him? You know why? Because none of the prophets revealed Jesus directly. If it was based on miracles, Elijah did not do any miracles. If it was based on accuracy of the prophetic, Elijah did not do much. But the one who was directly responsible for the revelation of Jesus was the one who the Bible considered to be the greatest of prophets. So the greatest businessman will not be the one with the greatest account. It will be the one who used his wealth greatest to reveal Jesus. The greatest parent will not be the one who raised children and educated them well. In the mind of God, Greatness is measured with respect to the revelation of Jesus. The greatest ministry, therefore, may not even be the Joshua Selmans. You would only clap because we seem to be the ones appreciated by society. That intercessor who is quiet that may never go online. The one who is praying us to remain stable and relevant. Those may be the ones who are great. You see, the day Jesus comes, we are going to be surprised. That many of us who you think are the ones who will be in front, you will see nameless faces that have never gone online. Nameless faces that may not even be able to speak English. That mama that only prays in Yoruba, but prays by the Spirit and say, Lord, keep this young man standing. Those people you see are the ones who, their lives are eternally committed to revealing Jesus. When you know this, it gives you wisdom to stay humble. Pride is proof you have forgotten something about God. There is a revelation of God that perpetually keeps you in humility. That you know that God has options eternally. But it's a privilege to be found in his program. But there is a grace. And I want to pray for you. We have about 10 minutes. I want your heart to be open. There are many people who miss out on impartations because all they are concerned about is falling down and rising up or they think that all there is to impartation is releasing graces to be able to preach on the pulpit. No. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good. Doing good is more than preaching. Doing good still by the anointing. Healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Allow me this morning to stand as a privileged steward and a conduit to allow some of these graces to rest upon you. There are some of you, by reason of the grace that rests upon you, is a pioneering grace. When that grace comes upon you, you find out that the grace to pioneer, whether it's a ministry, whether it's a business, pioneering comes with a grace. There are many people who do not have the grace but want to start things that never start. Hallelujah. And God is looking for abundance of men. It was Charles and Francis Hunter. John G. Lake also said that too. Smith Wigglesworth said that, that before Jesus Christ returns, sir, that there will be 
a resurrection of the healing ministry it looks like from the 70s into the 80s maybe early 90s the healing ministry began to fade away do you know why because there was an abundance of intellectualism and nothing wrong with that but it was overemphasized and it now began to downplay on spirituality so people chose logic or the holy spirit it looked like the holy spirit was left for uneducated people and most educated people did not seem to see the relevance of the holy spirit so the supernatural faded with intelligence but it must be restored paul was an intelligent man and in addition to his intelligence the holy spirit came upon him and he became apostle paul hallelujah ladies let me start with you this womb god gave you is not just for children hallelujah your mind is a womb and then for a woman your womb is a miracle because that is the only if god had designed five ways of bringing another life to the earth and say a woman's womb is only one of them but god in his intelligence designed that as vast and as technology is we have not perfected the art of ignoring that system and having children a woman's womb is a miracle can i tell you i know that jesus is coming soon but i perceive in my spirit that there is a dimension of revival and the revelation of jesus that is children that will bring i know our focus is on just adults but you think these young ones coming up do not have a role to play in god's end time program think again joash was a king at age eight josiah was a king at age nine hallelujah and so i want to start by praying for the women and the ladies when jesus resurrected the first person who saw him was a woman there is a reason why the bible made that happen the first person the angel came to speak to about the arrival of jesus was a woman the first person the angel spoke to or jesus spoke to at his resurrection was a woman 